Hi, my name is Frank Turley from Management Plaza and the goal of this video white paper is to introduce you to the Moscow prioritization technique, show you its history, its advantages and introduce you to good questions to ask to help you judge the potential value of requirements and how to prioritize these requirements in any project. I'm not a big fan of just providing a theoretical explanation of a new topic or technique, as you need to see this in action so you can use it. So I will also include a practical example which will enable you to learn this technique and start using this technique after this video. This is the agenda that I will be following and I will start with the prioritization problem. The prioritization problem. For example, a company decides it wants to create a new software application. The traditional approach is for the project team to sit down and write a long 100 to 200 page document that will bore the customer to death and include all user specifications as they are worried that they might leave something out as they have only one chance to get these requirements and make sure the solution provides the expected benefits. So as you can imagine, there are a number of issues to this approach. This diagram shows the results of an important survey that was carried out by the Standish Group. It shows the percentage of features used in a typical software system after it is delivered. 45% of the functionality developed will never be used. This is just hard to believe and what a waste of effort as this should never be done. Just think about it for a second. 19% of the functionality is rarely used, so perhaps there is no need to develop this at all. 16% of the functionality will be used sometimes. 13% of the functionality will be used often and is therefore necessary. And 7% of the functionality will be used always. So the traditional approach is to gather all the requirements, create a project plan, define a budget, and then deliver a solution that won't quite match the user requirements and deliver functionality that will never be used. This is how the majority of companies run predictive software projects today. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be great if you had a technique to help you figure out the always and often functionality and deliver this first? There is another way. Let me repeat again one of the main points of this study done by the Standish Group, and that is that 45% of the functionality will never be used. So this is a complete waste of time to do this. So we need a way to detect the 7% that will always be used, the 30% of functionality that will be often used, and the 16% that will be sometimes used. The good news is that we can use the Moscow technique to help us to do this. And Moscow works well in an agile environment. If you are using Prince2, you can take advantage of the adaptive lifecycle approach for software and knowledge related projects. So the Moscow technique works very well with Prince2. I will now introduce you to the advantages of Moscow. Moscow helps us to identify the functionality that will deliver the most value and therefore must be delivered for the software application to work as expected. Help to deliver the most important things first and therefore get a quicker return on investment as the solution will be delivered incrementally and users can start using it sooner. Helps to identify functionality that will bring less value and can be delivered later if necessary or not at all. Increase the satisfaction of the users as they can see that Moscow helps them to identify the most important requirements and they can start using the software application much quicker. 
It also provides a better foundation for adaptation as users continue to give feedback during the project so the application will work as expected. So now you know how good Moscow is, but how do you explain this Moscow approach to your boss or to the person who will pay for the project? The best way to present the value of Moscow is to ask these questions as it will help to get them thinking and hopefully get three yeses. Start with saying, it is practically impossible to get more than 50% of the requirements written down at the start of a software project. So, should we try to avoid this impossible task? The answer should be yes. If the answer is no, then it's time to update your CV. Next question, would you like that we avoid creating the 45% of features that will never be used? We should get another yes. Next, would you like to start off by recognizing the most important requirements first so we can deliver these sooner? We should get another yes. And lastly, would you like to get a good return on your investment sooner? And we should get one more yes. Then you can advise your boss that the Musker technique is what the project needs and you can use this presentation or video to introduce it. You can also send me an email for these slides if you like. However, there are still some old fashioned managers that still ask for a full detailed project specification up front and also ask for a fixed budget with the time plan. There is not much you can do here except to keep trying. Also, public bodies don't like this approach as it upsets their tender approach. Now I will introduce Moscow. Moscow is a prioritization technique that is used in business analysis and software development to reach a common understanding with the stakeholders on the importance that they place on each requirement. Moscow has four categories of prioritization, which are must, should, could, and won't have for now. Starting with must have. This is for a requirement that must be included in the final solution for the solution to work. For example, meeting a legal requirement, otherwise the software cannot be put into production. Next, should have. This represents a high priority requirement that should be included in the solution if at all possible. This is often a critical requirement, but one which can be satisfied in other ways if strictly necessary. For example, we can use a manual process for a short time. Next, could have. This describes a requirement which is considered desirable but not necessary. This will be included if time and resources permit. And lastly, won't have or won't have for now, represents a requirement that stakeholders have agreed will not be implemented in the given release, but may be considered for the future. So now you know a bit more about Moscow, and next is where it came from. Moscow was developed in the 1990s. It was developed by Dai Clagg, who is then working for Oracle UK Consulting. Dai donated the intellectual property rights to dsdm.org, which is the most important name in the Agile world. So thanks, Dai, for doing this. Prince2 also adopted Moscow in 2009. Perhaps they were waiting for the Cold War to end. Moscow is often used with the time boxing technique, where a deadline is fixed so that the focus can be on the most important requirements. For me, the most important agile techniques are Moscow, time boxing, user stories, and facilitated workshops. So how important is your requirement? There are good and bad questions to ask 
when a person suggests a new feature or new functionality. A bad question, how important is your requirement? If a person comes to you with the requirement and you ask them how important it is, the answer will be very important. This is because it is their idea and of course it is very important to them. So this approach won't work. The good news is that it is possible to ask the question in a different way. And the answer you get will help you and the requester see the true priority of the request. So, a good question to ask is, can the end users use the application without this particular requirement? And the answer has to be yes or no. If the answer is no, that it cannot go live without this requirement, then this is a must. For example, user authentication or a login screen. This is a must to give people access to their data. Another example would be brakes in a car. We cannot sell a car without brakes. This is illegal, so this is a must. You can also ask, can we go live without this requirement? Next question, does this functionality have a big effect on the business case? Answer, yes or no. So if the functionality costs 1,000 euro, for example, do we get 5,000 euro in return? Or if we add a new reporting feature, ask how much time can be saved by this feature and get a good estimate. Another good example is a password forget feature. This can save a lot of time and money for the help desk as users can help themselves. Next, if the question, does this functionality have a big effect on the business case is no, we can still measure this and still have some value. The concerned person will now understand this functionality as nice to have, but will not bring a lot of business value compared to other ideas. For example, a feature to save the user ID when the user logs in. So the user does not have to type it in each time. This feature can be added much later, but should not be prioritized above more important functionality. And last, can this requirement wait and does it have low business value? You can ask, what value will it bring? For example, a feature to save user searches. We find out that this is of interest to only about 5% of the users and will not save much time anyway, as it's so easy to create new searches. So we mark this down as won't have for now, but this might change in the future if more and more users want this and it becomes more complicated to create searches. Remember that 45% of the functionality in the typical software application is never used. So next we can look at an example of how to use the prioritization technique. So our project is a CRM application and I've picked a fictitious company called xwatch.be, which is a Belgian company that wishes to develop a new CRM sales application. So they want to sell smartwatches in Belgium as this is a growing market. The goal is to get the shop up and running as soon as possible with the high priority requirements so they can start selling as soon as possible. And these are the requirements that they would like to prioritize. I'm going to list four, starting with one, which is PayPal integration. And based on research, we believe that 2% of clients will use PayPal and 98% will use credit card. The second requirement is link the CRM application with the stock database. So this is needed to provide the number of items in stock, so users can see this. The third requirement is a home page chat feature. And based on our market research, we know that 20% of clients use this service. And the fourth requirement to consider is user authentication. So providing a user ID and password for each user that wants to buy something.
So the goal is then to look at these uh, requirements and to prioritize them. So we will start with this requirement to prioritize PayPal integration. And we ask the questions which are listed at the bottom. The first question is, can a client use the application without this requirement? And the answer is yes. The client can still use this application if this requirement is not in there. The next question, does this requirement have a big effect on the business case? Well, the answer is no. It has a very little effect on the business case as only 2% of the clients will actually wish to pay via PayPal. The next question, can this requirement wait and has it low business value? The answer is yes, this requirement can wait and it does have low business value. So then how should we prioritize this? We should prioritize it as won't have for now. So it will not be included in the first versions of the sales application. The next requirement to prioritize is linking the CRM application with the stock database. So again, the first question is, can a client use the sales application without this requirement? And the answer is yes. Clients can still view products by in check orders. So this is not a must have. Next question. Does this requirement have a big effect on the business case? And the answer is, well, yes and no. It does have some business value and we estimated to save about 30 minutes support each day. So that is a little bit significant. And then the last question, can this requirement wait and has it low business value? And the answer to this is, yes, it can wait and it doesn't have low business value. So we believe that the cost will be about 900 euro and we will have a return on investment in about four months, which is not bad. So uh, after considering everything then, we think we should prioritize this as a could have, okay? So there will be other features or functionality prioritized above it, but we'll mark this as could have. The next requirement to prioritize is the home page chat feature. So the first question, can the client use this application without this requirement? And the answer is yes, the clients can still view products, buy and check. Second question is, does this question have a big effect on the business case? And here the answer is yes. It's got a very high business value as 20% of users will expect to use it and the return on investment is less than three weeks. Question three is, can this requirement wait? And we believe that no, it cannot wait as it's going to affect about 30% of sales. So we should prioritize this as should have. So the last requirement to prioritize is user authentication. So giving a user ID to each of our customers. So the first question is, can a client use this application without this requirement? And the answer is no. Clients will not be able to buy without this requirement and the shop will not work. So as we can see, it's needed. Question two, does this requirement have a big effect on the business case? And yes, it does. It has a very, very high business value as we cannot get any revenue without this. So we don't even have to consider question three and we can prioritize this as a must have. So now we've gone through the four requirements and this is, gives you, or hopefully this gives you a good idea on how to use Moscow. So let's do a quick summary of using Moscow with this example CRM application. So just imagine if you did this for each requirement, you would be sure to deliver the most important functionality first. So to prioritize the most important things to do first. Deliver lesser functionality later. Avoid delivering functionality that the users will not use, so wasting money. 
be open to detect any must-have or should-have functionality requirements during the project and then prioritizing these over existing requirements if needed. And lastly, delivering a working software application that meets users' expectations as early as possible and users can work in the way that they want to. Summary. So I hope now you have a better idea of what Moscow is and how to use Moscow. You can now introduce this technique to your colleagues or your boss, and you can use this presentation or ask me for the slides if needed. It is a good idea to use this technique with software and knowledge related projects, such as research, writing, marketing, and so on. So give it a go. So again, thanks for watching. Leave a comment, click like would be appreciated, share with other people, or even tattoo Moscow onto your body. That would be great. And you can provide feedback to me, Frank at Management Plaza, written like so in GMT, or visit our blog site. You can also search for another video called Moscow, the Ukraine project. So I will do this as soon as I can. Okay, thanks again and enjoy using Moscow. Bye for now.